What's up everybody? I am Jim T-Shirt and this is my latest Carrera tutorial. This time we're going to be talking about indirect lighting in Carrera 7. So first things first for all of you people who are new to Carrera or new to CG in general. Indirect lighting is basically light in your scene that is not coming directly from a light source. Instead, indirect lighting is light that is reflecting off of one surface and onto another. It's a real-world lighting simulation. It's very realistic, and it comes with a very, very heavy price in rendering time. IDL, as it's known, takes so long to render, in fact, that it's actually not used very often in the uh, CG industry. Most CG animated films that you've seen, like Toy Story or Shrek or even WALL-E, use simulated IDL, where the lighting directors will actually take a bunch of spotlights and whatnot and fake the indirect lighting just to save on rendering time. But anyways, I know that there's a lot of realism junkies out there that want to learn this stuff, so hopefully I can shed a little light on indirect lighting. And that was a terrible joke, I apologize. So here we are in Carrera's assembly room, and I've got this very simple room set up here just for the purpose of this tutorial. Got a couple of big windows in it, and that's about it. Now what I want to do here is, let me switch to the camera one. I want to create a render from inside this room on a nice, bright, sunny day. And I want the entire room to be completely illuminated by natural light, no artificial light. And this is a, a perfect job for indirect lighting. So first things first, let me go back to the director's camera here. Indirect lighting, one of the biggest misconceptions about it is that in order to get it to work, you just go over to your rendering settings, you turn it on, and you're good to go. That could not be further from the truth. Indirect lighting is only going to calculate the light bouncing around inside the room, but that light has to start somewhere. So for this scene, there's basically two types of light that I have to worry about that is skylight and sunlight. And for the skylight, I'm actually attacking this on two different fronts. First of all, you can see right here I have a uh, an HDRI map plugged into the scene's background. Do a quick test render and you can see it. And secondly, I have a couple of distant lights that I've called skylight arranged so that they're coming through the windows. Now technically, you could just use an HDRI map, crank up its intensity, and that could technically serve as your, your skylight. The problem with that is that you really have to crank up the rendering settings to get that to look good, and you are always limited by the, uh, the quality of the HDRI that you're using. So it's always better to give Carrera a little bit more to work with by adding some lights. I've got the uh, shadow intensity turned way, way down on these guys because it's not really needed. Uh, color is set to the color of the sky map that I'm using, kind of, sort of. And the brightness is turned down to just 54%. So if I come over here and do a quick test render, you can see right there that it doesn't do much. Mind you, global illumination and direct light is all shut off at this point. And that's really about all the skylight's going to do. So next up is our sunlight. Let me make this visible. And again, I'm using a distant light. Let me zoom in on this guy. And it's pointed at a downward angle so that it comes through each window. I've got the shadow set to 100%, and I'm using soft ray-traced shadows at 25% for the, uh, for the radius, because I want some some crisp shadows coming from the from the window frames so now with that turned on and the skylight let's take a look at what we got here again not much you can see we've got some bright spots here from where the sun's hitting the floor and that's good because once indirect lighting is turned on these bright spots are actually going to become light sources so now what I want to do here is turn on the skylight turn on the indirect lighting <clears throat> The, uh, our work in the assembly room is actually done for now. And I'm going to leave all of the uh, quality settings alone. My first render, I just want to see what the lighting levels look like. 
I'm not concerned about how pretty it is at this point. And I can leave light through transparency unchecked because I cheated on this room and there's actually no glass in the windows. And that's actually a pretty good trick. If uh, if you're not close to the windows, then they don't need to have glass. You're just giving Carrera stuff to think about that it doesn't need. So let's do a little render here. <clears throat> and this will take a second to, to calculate. And here we go. You can already see that we've got a lot more light in the scene than we had initially. And this is indirect lighting. It's calculating the light from the sun, the light from the sky, bouncing around the inside of the room. We've got these kind of tan colored walls and a little bit of pink in the floor. And the indirect light is actually going to pick up all of that color and bounce it around and light up the entire scene. And as I said earlier, these bright spots on the floor from where the sun's hitting the floor, I don't know if you can really see this or not, if you look at the ceiling right above them, there's a bright spot there too now because the light is hitting the floor, bouncing up onto the ceiling, and coming back down into the rest of the room. And this guy is just about done. Don't let this fool you because this is a really simple set. This thing rendered in 54 seconds. If this was a big, complex stonemason set, the test render could have taken 30 minutes. Now, at this point, it doesn't look too pretty. We've got a lot of artifacting here, blotchiness, but that's okay, because the only thing I'm concerned with now is how bright it is, and I'm actually satisfied with the lighting right now. If, let's say just for pretend, that your first render isn't what you want in terms of brightness, now you've got three options to adjust the brightness when you're using indirect lighting. First up, <clears throat> the skylight. Because this room has a couple of big windows in it, increasing the intensity of the skylight will have a subtle effect on the overall brightness of the scene. If your scene doesn't have any windows whatsoever, you don't even need to have skylight on. But because I do, well, there you go. <laughs> All right, secondly, the indirect light intensity. Obviously, turning this up is going to increase the intensity of the light bouncing around in the room, as calculated by the IDL, and it will have a pretty drastic effect on the scene. Your third option, which is always a little bit overlooked, is to actually go back into the assembly room and increase the intensity of your primary light. In this case, it's the, uh, the sunlight. By doing that, the light is brighter right from the beginning as the IDL starts to, uh, to calculate, and that will, in fact, brighten up your entire scene. And any of these three options are going to give you different results. You really just have to think about what it is you're trying to accomplish, and in the end, you're just going to have to play around with the, the three options available to you until you get what you want.